second. Right, so welcome everyone. And uh, yeah, the the exciting sessions of uh, the second workshop of this, this uh, exciting second session of this workshop on communication continues. And we're very thrilled that today we're going to talk about uh, photographic image ethics and storytelling, uh, which will be led by Bezad Larry. Uh, Bezad Larry is the CEO of Voyager Expeditions and a founding member of High Asia Habitat Fund. Apart from being an avid explorer, Bezad is also uh, a, a very special uh, photographer. He specializes in documenting remote reaches of the world. Uh, he also happens to be a fellow of the Royal Geographical Society and a fellow of the Royal Asiatic Society. Um, so Bizad will be leading the first half of uh, the first major segment of the uh, workshop today. And then we also are uh, grateful uh, to Joanna van Grusen, who's kindly agreed to, uh, to lead the second part where we'll be talking a little bit about ethics and the changing perspectives of using uh, using photographs and videos and visual images uh, in, in, in short as a tool for communication. Um, I think uh, with with that, I'd like to pass it on to Bezad. Bezad, over to you, please. Hi, everyone. It's great to be back on another one of the Snow Leopard Network's um, modules. And I'm really looking forward to showing um, some of my images and then talking you through um, my photographic process and um, how I feel about storytelling with photography. Um, can you guys see my slide? Yes. Uh, okay, perfect. So I'll go through them slowly. I'm uh, in Ladakh at the moment and so my internet connection is not the fastest. So hopefully um, these will go well if they're not, you know. The start off um, for me, you know, um, I've been photographing snow leopards now for maybe uh, six and a half, seven years. And I've just been incredibly lucky to work with uh, some of the finest snow leopard experts anywhere. And um, they're also brilliant conservationists. They know how to... Um, track uh, these magnificent cats, and then they're just a treasure trove of knowledge. So, you know, whatever images you see here, it's it's not just like I'm out there in the field by myself um, running into snow leopards. There's a whole crew that allows for um, these images to um, be made. And so the goal today is to really just go into um, how photography can be an incredible um, tool in your communication toolbox. But with um, any powerful tools, you know, you, you have to be really careful about how you use it and give it enough forethought and um, planning so that it is, in fact, something that is helping you. Because just like any tool, it can also cause great harm. And so as um, the majority of the people... Ending um, within the uh, my presentation is mostly about how conservation and photography can go hand in hand. The well, basically, I will walk you through a series of images um, that I've taken while um, talking about storytelling, while talking about using um, the wildlife of a place, while using the uh, landscapes of a place and while using the communities that you work with to weave together a story to your audience. So because we specialize, so I, I run a travel company and then I also work with a nonprofit. Um, through our travel company, we primarily focus on conservation tourism. So um, we work in snow leopard landscapes in uh, India in the Indian Himalayas across um, the central Tian Shan in Kyrgyzstan. And then we're also working in Mongolia and Tajikistan. 
So a lot of different varied snow leopard habitats, but um, uh, essentially throughout the whole place, snow leopards are in some form of conflict with humans. And so for us, the snow leopard tourism helps um, create both an audience that is um, supportive of snow leopards, but also creates an opportunity for the local communities to be able to make a livelihood that is um, much more dependent on the snow leopard and uh, is allows them to live a much um, more conflict free, free life with snow leopards or wolves or bears in their neighborhoods. So all these snow leopards are wild. All of them have, most of them have been shot in and around Ladakh, uh, mostly in Hemis National Park. The sightings over here can be anywhere from a kilometer to two kilometers to you know, 400 meters if you're really lucky. And I spend almost um, two and a half to three months a year in the field um, tracking these cats with our team and photographing them. So my success rate is vastly skewed from um, someone who might just be visiting the national park for a week and might just see one um, at a more normal distance. The goal of all these images um, for us is essentially to use them as a storytelling tool. I've, um, initially when I first started photography, I kept working with, um, when I started photography for snow leopards, that is. So when I started um, uh, searching for snow leopards, started going out on these tours, trying to track them, working with the local community, it was always this pressing desire to get a close shot of a snow leopard but slowly as the snow leopard shots started coming in it was no longer really about the snow leopard itself it was more about how can these shots of the snow leopard and um, other surrounding shots allow um, us to really start tackling our issues um, which were human wildlife conflict so for us um, we all always stress that you need to know the why of telling your story. If, if you are telling a story about the snow leopard, you know, what is your story? Is it just about the snow leopard? Is it about um, some sort of an issue the snow leopards are facing? Is it more about the general habitat the snow leopards are in? Is it about um, issues the communities face um, because they share landscape and territory with these animals? Is it, you know, are they causing issues with domestic livestock loss or um, lots of financial damage? So why is it important? What is the story and why is it important? And then who are you telling the story to? Who's your audience? Why would they care about this issue? And then finally, once they do care about this issue, what do you want them to do? So all of you are you know, representing different organizations and work with different aspects of snow leopard landscapes. So each of you will have a distinct what for what your story is and you'll have a distinct why for its importance. You might also have very different audiences. Some of you might be appealing to fundraisers or some of you might be appealing to um, uh, maybe big, large institutional donors, maybe small, um, small private individual donors who might give small um, donations. And then Essentially, if, if you're looking at photography as a communication tool, you clearly, clearly want to engage them in some way. So with that engagement, you might have a different um, call to action. What do you want them to do? Do you want them to call up their friends to talk about this issue? Do you want them to um, just simply donate? Do you want them to engage in a more substantial way? Do you want them to come over to volunteer? All of all of these need to combine in your process before you go out and shoots or putting together content. You need to look at the end goal and um, create this narrative thread through the whole thing. For us, you know, it's easiest for me to talk about why, um, what our why is, so that you can see how we piece together the various components of our why and how we use these images to tell a story that um, allows us to tackle 
what we think is important for our organization. And that first why is um, basically using conservation tours to reduce wildlife conflict. And for that, we assess cities um, where they are experiencing some sort of conflict, where their livelihoods are being uh, drastically affected negatively by snow leopards, maybe because of predation, maybe because of um, just over time livestock loss, or just you know blue sheep or ibex getting into their fields and eating up their harvest before they can get to it. So we need to convince a small number of the right kind of tourists to visit. We then need to be able to create employment in these pockets and um, eventually be able to contribute economically to these small communities um, by using these tourism dollars. So that is our why. And for us, photography is the most powerful tool. Um, you know, videos are also super powerful, but creating videos and creating the you know, the amount of thing one has to do, the amount of product that goes into it is a really long-term thing. So just for a 15 minute film, you might end up spending three or four months. And so if you're hiring people for that process, it can turn into a really expensive um, production. And uh, there are only so many times you will, um, someone might see that film, but continuously having new images go out is a great way to engage your audience. So for us, we use these images to essentially educate people who would be supportive of either our tourism work or our nonprofit work. What um, the issue is, is, where this issue is, and who are the main partners. The snow leopards are the most charismatic of those wild animals. Then we've got the landscape, where we've got uh, these incredible um, mountains, incredible um, uh, uh, Tibetan plateau areas, and then we have uh, um, the most important component, the community. The story basically ties together when the community and the wildlife come together. For us, you know, images like this, let me just give you some background on this image. We were observing the snow leopard for several hours and was much higher on the slope that is directly behind it. Um, so the snow leopard um, had a few blue sheep it was looking at, it tried to um, stalk them unsuccessfully. It um, eventually then um, just decided to take a nap instead since the hunt was going nowhere. And then all of a sudden, you know, three or four hours later while it was napping, this cow, um, wandered down much below it, sort of coming down into this creek area on the uh, near side of this fence. And so the cow was basically returning from its pasture and going back to the village of Rumbuk, um, which is where it lives. And it just so happened that the snow leopard also saw this cow and decided that it would try to stalk this cow instead. So the snow leopard came down. Um, it started um, moving down towards this and we were, I was there with my team and there were maybe 15 or 20 other people there, some locals, some tourists. And um, all of us, as soon as we saw it sort of running down through the screen, we all realized what was gonna happen. And so one of the locals quickly started running down as well from our side of the slope because we didn't, we didn't want it killing someone's cow. Um, there's just no reason for it to do it. But, if, if it can get an easy meal. And so the snow leopard basically stalked this cow up until the man managed to get down to the creek and it was his cow. So he whistled and the cow looked at him, the snow leopard looked at him and then the snow leopard just sat down and then the cow slowly started crossing the river and the cow never knew there was a snow leopard behind it the whole time. So uh, this is just such an interesting image to me because it shows um, the issue, right? So the the cow represents the, clearly the human element of this issue. The wildlife is represented. And then we've got this wonderful barrier um, in between, which is the chain link fence that has been put in by the local wildlife department to actually stop blue sheep from coming into these fields to eat the harvest. And so you've got this, just this perfect um, conjunction of uh, this issue in one photograph. 
And I like using it because the cow escaped. And um, that basically showed that the problem can be solved. And, you know, we got to see a snow leopard. We got to see what might happen. And we got to see what a positive outcome of that scenario can be. So just a good little image. So through photography, essentially, we, we want to create a small demand for the right kind of tourist. We need the type of tourist that considers um, visiting these places uh, as uh, both, both an experience that they really want to do, but also an experience they want to partake in because of the positive impact it can have on this ecosystem, on this wildlife, and on a very critical issue that is um, prevalent across all of High Asia. So in, in terms of experience, you know, while we document snow, um, just because, you know, it, it is the most charismatic of the wildlife here, that doesn't mean we don't. Put that. We may, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we may have lost him. Uh, oh, we may have, yes. Well, he's coming from the snow leopard habitat, so there's um, ups and downs and connectivity. Uh, hey, Benzad, are you there? And the other thing, sure. Wait, you guys can hear me? No, we lost you for the last 30 seconds or so, Bezad, sorry. Ah, uh, so we lost right. him. I, yeah, I was there. It was funny because I could hear you saying we lost him. And I was like, no, you didn't. <laughs> but then it actually said you connect things. So right. um, I will go back to my presentation. Please. Thank you. Sure. And so sorry if that happens again. Struggle again. again uh, Kustu, maybe can you get his slides ready um, as a backup? In case? Sure. Thank yep. you. Um, I think it's just my connection. So I might, if I drop entirely, you'll also lose my audio. So we'll see. I'll just start by, you know, we need the right type of tourists. And so for having the right type of tourists, they need to envision the right type of experience. If they come only for the snow leopard, it is problematic because the snow leopard might be seen, the snow leopard might not be seen. So in order to tell the whole story, we need to consider the entire ecosystem, which for us includes everything from the smallest pika. And so this pike over here is taking some forage home to stock up for the winter. And it also includes um, everything else in the landscape. So everything from the people who share this habitat to the ibex, to the blue sheep, everything is part of the story. If we were to only use snow leopards in the narrative, what we would be creating is a uh, demand for snow leopards, which is not really something that everyone can always deliver. And it would create the wrong kind of um, uh, demand also because people will come specifically to see the snow leopard and nothing else because they haven't been informed about the other options there. So when you include the rest of the ecosystem in the story, then our audience is better informed. It's um, better understanding of what the entire experience is. And it's um, just also prepared to enjoy everything for what it is and not just come for one animal. The appeal to this um, audience basically needs to um, go through not just the joys of um, what a snow leopard experience might be like for us, or um, if you're looking at <laughs> fundraising or uh, you know, you or, um, field teams or anything else which requires some sort of, that's telling me my internet connection is unstable. Am I still there, guys? Yes. You're okay, excellent. So for us, you know, um, if, if we were to just show pictures of snow leopards and we could just set up a bunch of camera traps and have a constant flow of snow leopard images. But what that would do is just constantly show the same content over and over and over and over. And it wouldn't show its habitat. It wouldn't show it from a much more macro level. It would also not give a sense of scale of 
perspective of where you are working as a field team or where your rangers are working or where you are conducting these camera trap surveys. So you can say, I need more camera traps in order to do a population assessment. But what does that really mean? You know, like this is the kind of terrain you are putting those camera traps in. This is what someone from your team is going to have to climb. This is where I'm going to have to spend a few nights as they put enough camera traps in this area. And so this is a picture on the this is the Panj River that separates Afghanistan from Tajikistan. So I took this picture from Tajikistan looking towards Afghanistan. And so it's all prime snow leopard habitat. But so often donors, um, funders, and tourists don't get the whole perspective because we are showing the story really up close. If we are just showing people's faces, if we're just showing really tight shots of um, snow leopards walking in front of camera traps, we miss out on scale and context, you know, someone can kind of stand and see, oh, wow, I, it must be really hard to go there. It must be really hard to set up camera traps there. It must be really hard um, to go back when your camera traps are covered in three feet of snow and you can no longer find them. So you can tell a much broader story, which can actually um, be much more engaging to the person seeing it. Um, if you uh, either zoom in or zoom out from what you normally do. Oftentimes we get caught up in showing the same pictures over and over because those are what we also become comfortable with. From a tourism perspective, from us, it's important for us to show our customers this landscape so that they can also have a more truer understanding of the difficulty of going there, of not expecting luxury, of not expecting uh, ease, of actually mentally becoming much more conditioned to experiencing a trip that is truly an expedition. So it's it's all about context. Then um, much of the all the time uh, to press or to journalists, then there has to be a, this element of. Um, uh, honesty of ethics of how the image was captured. If we are basically showing that, um, you know, like we're showing pictures of blue sheep or we're showing pictures of snow leopards and they end up being um, in very controlled conditions and not out in the wild, then it basically creates a false um, perspective. It allows people to believe that they can get something of that nature. Uh, um, easily. Often I take these images, I'm, I'm showing you most of my images. We've got one from um, our one of my partners here, Rashid. But all these images are mine. And the reason I have a lot of grid field. And so we always let our guests know that the images that they're seeing are not representative of all tours. These are images shot by people that are consistently there. So on, on the other hand, if you convert that to um, something where you're just dealing with donors or where you're engaging with fundraisers, um, you might want to also show some of um, what goes on behind the scenes, you know, instead of simply showing what your main beneficiary looks like, a snow leopard in front of a camera trap, you might want to give them an honest perspective of what a day in the office is like, what a day in the field is like. All these things basically connect your audience to a more authentic understanding of like sometimes grant writing, sometimes it's actually going out in the field and having meetings with the community. Sometimes it's you know much more outdoorsy and uh, filled with population surveys. The more you document of what goes on from a 360 degree perspective, the more honest and open you are about not just what you want to fundraise for, but really about other things as well, which just overall inspires trust and inspires confidence and doesn't come away as just being um, something that's been done for face value because as a nonprofit, you're supposed to, or as a tour operator, you're supposed to. So this um, uh, ability to basically show something that is beyond just the PR stuff or the marketing stuff is an important aspect. So, you know, for us, one of the honesty factors is also just showing um, the other animals 
comes around. It's not just all about the snow leopard. It's also about the blue sheep. It's also about the pikas. Um, and it's also about more blue sheep. So we do see a lot of blue sheep. The um, goal then, oh, here's a poll. Do you want us to launch it, Bazad, or are you good? Yes, yes, please. Yes, please, okay. launch it. I am launching the poll. Can you ask the question, Bazad, for the poll? So, um, folks, you know, which, which snow leopard image would you select if you had to sell a snow leopard tour? There's no right or wrong answer, right, Bazad? It's it's all right. Well, you know, it's just all about perspective because <laughs> all of these images are used to advertise snow leopard tours. If you were to do a Google search, you would find all of them. But and then I'll just give some context about each of them. Well, we're still looking for three more votes, guys. One more vote. Ninety-two percent of the votes are in, and we're waiting for one more. Shall we share with that? Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, that's pretty interesting. So uh, I will just so basically seven people voted for image one, four for image two and one for image three, no one voted for the last one. So I'm just gonna stop sharing these results and then close this and then take you to this screen. So the first um, image is of a wild snow leopard. And these are, this is a super close sighting. Um, this is the same snow leopard that came down for the cow and um, just sort of hung out in this gully in front of us for a while. The second snow leopard is Jamila, and she lives at the Zurich Zoo. Um, she is often photographed, and it's a good habitat in Switzerland, with uh, especially in the winter, for taking pictures of snow leopards. And of course, um, it is much closer. You can count her whiskers. You can see the texture of her eyes. Um, one sec. <laughs> And so, sorry, our door, doorbell got stuck, which is always a fun thing to happen. Um, so then um, we've got the third one, which is actually at a game farm called the Triple D Ranch in Montana. Uh, this game farm has a snow leopard. It's got some lynx. It's got a Siberian tiger. It's got, I think, a Barbary lion, which is extinct in the wild. And it's got a few more things. And so generally, uh, these type of game farms are considered pretty unethical uh, in terms of wildlife photography, just because these are captive animals that are somewhat trained. Um, and there's always a trainer around, oftentimes with some sort of a stick or something else that the big cat or the other, or they even have wolves, are afraid of and some sort of a lure or bait or some meat. So super unethical um, image, especially if you're trying to sell a wild snow leopard tour. The last one is Sabu, um, and he lives at the Roger Williams Park Zoo in Rhode Island. And Sabu is uh, the poster child for a lot of snow leopard tour operators. Um, if you just sort of Google snow leopard tours and you go through some of the big companies, you will basically see a lot of image two, three, and four. For um, the tour operators that are somewhat more ethical and actually spend a lot more time in the field, you will actually see images of um, these wild snow leopards. So pretty interesting and um, pretty impressed with the poll answers as well. But really, it's, it's hard to just look at a snow leopard and say that. So, you know, um, let's open it up to a little more discussion. 
um, photography, I think, always inspires more conversation. So here's a little whiteboard topic. Um, what messages do current pull up photos send? Not just photos you commonly come across. And Kusto, yes. do you want to help with the whiteout? Sure, I'm just setting it up. Give me a second. Thanks. Such an interesting presentation, Bedzad, so far. Thank you. Absolutely, my pleasure. Yep. So Bedzad, can you kindly repeat the question that you just asked? Yeah, you know what? So everyone's familiar with Snow Leopard images, I think, in this group. And so what uh, message do current snow leopard pictures send out? And you can also talk about, you know, uh, how you view the message that snow leopard pictures are sending out, but also how you think your audience um, views it. So, you know, I would describe snow leopard images basically in three categories. Um, we see a lot of camera trap images that um, all the major organizations that work with snow leopards put out of snow leopards. We see um, images um, of wild snow leopards that both scientists and researchers as well as tourists put out. And then we see um, just sort of captive animal um, things. So what, what, what do you think the general audience or you think of the messaging in general at the moment? Okay, um, we have one. So I can also read out the chat. Yeah, please, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. So let's see, welcome. Livestock predation. Uh, one of the things we mentioned last week was how many zoo pics there are on social media and how does that influence the viewer? Yeah, and, and the unrealistic um, blue eyes when you often see it super up close. The, yeah, so that's a good point. How do zoo images affect um, the perception of snow leopards? Does anyone have thoughts on how that actually affects or influences the viewer, zoo images? And uh, Bedzad, if you're okay, they can take the mic, right? So if- uh, Absolutely, 100%. If Sybil, you wanna come and talk, please go ahead. Yeah, please feel free to just start chatting as well. It really makes snow leopards seem so accessible, at least to the general public who doesn't realize what the terrain is like and what your, your real chances of getting shots like that are. Um, Aliana says, and then Sybil adds that certainly it doesn't help viewers understand the environment. Flavia is saying that it can basically um, make them appear as docile animals and that we can get close to them. Matt also mentions closeness. So basically this illusion of um, uh, being able to be close, being able to um, see them sort of like you would uh, a lion on safari in Africa. And then Harshad also adds the closeness factor. Um, unrealistic expectations are set and uh, you again miss out on the fact that these animals live in um, these absolutely incredible mountain landscapes. I always, um, I agree Eliana's, uh, to Eliana's point, zoo images, they are always so healthy and well-groomed and great looking, well-fed and happy. And so I, I always look at um, these zoo images, especially on tour operators' websites, and I always think of them as the supermodels of the snow leopard world you know they just look like they've had a fresh shampoo and they've been conditioned and groomed and when we see snow leopards in the wild you know they've got cuts they've got scars um their coats are almost always sort of 
matted in some place because of the blood um, from their kills. And then um, we've always noticed snow leopards roll in the dirt before um, a hunt to camouflage themselves with the local um, color. And so they're always so dusty. The uh, Flavia adds, it should help them see the animals as part of the ecosystem, which is a critical point. Um, wider out, more landscape. Um, Sibyl adds, also focus is on cuteness and can send the wrong message. Example, picture of a snow leopard chewing its tail. People think it's cute, but it's a sign of stress in captivity. Absolutely, you know, you and you do get a lot of such content of um, captive snow leopards playing, of um, uh, cubs hanging out, but then it, it is always, um, there's always a deeper story um, to captive animals. Uh, Joanna makes the a really strong point. Um, it can also encourage unethical behavior, example, baiting, in order to try to replicate such images. And so that is oftentimes one of the pressures of putting out these supermodel shots of um, uh, snow leopards when you are trying to sell a tour. Because then um, for a lot of tour operators uh, who use images like these, they've already set a pretty unrealistic expectation then they have the pressure to perform when clients show up. So on the other hand, if you show a variety of images, if you show everything from a one kilometer snow leopard to a um, 500 meter snow leopard, and then you basically say, hey, it can be anywhere amongst this, or you can see no snow leopard. And that is also okay, because it is uh, the, one of the hardest animals to see. So um, pretty much, I think everyone is on the same page around this. Shemi says narratives around snow leopard are very monolithic. It either shows them in very charismatic light or in a negative light. These binaries don't explore multifaceted layers. Very true. It is, um, if, if you're looking at it as a, an animal that's just cute um, or, or nice or friendly, or it is looking, you're looking at it as um, something that has caused an uh, enormous amount of destruction to remote communities in terms of livestock damage, in terms of um, financial damage caused by that. So yes, it, especially if you go into communities and you listen to them talk about the snow leopard, it can seem to be very, very binary. Zoo images um, lack a story. And the effort um, that you know photographers would go through or trackers would go through, or um, basically there is no uh, sort of sense of expedition or exploration um, uh, behind it, and it doesn't convey the difficulty that goes into capturing um, something of this nature. These are pretty great points, and what um, so. A lot of these are, you know, very accurate messages that do go out um, from this. What are some messages that you think should go out instead? Like I said, it may encourage some kind of people wanting to have them, like in Montana, like tigers, um, yeah, um, exotic animals as pets, or other people trying to sell photo ops with them, have them around for people who want pictures and don't see them in the wild. And you know, that is exactly what game farms do. Um, a lot of photographers will go to game farms um, because they can get these supermodel images of snow leopards, of lions, of Siberian tigers, which are, um, you know, Siberian tigers and snow leopards are impossible to get fantastic shots off without spending years in the field. Um, so people just want to cut it short. And actually, there are nonprofits um, which use some of these um, images as part of their calendars. So not none of the major snow leopard ones, um, uh, as you know, everyone's got tons of wild images, but I've seen small, um, much smaller, much more localized nonprofits actually use um, animals that were photographed in captivity, you know, small animals like rabbits or wolves or fox. Um, to basically use on calendars for fundraising. And that's just ridiculous. My personal thing I hate is pictures of people with wild cats or any wild animal. Always, always a, 
problematic thing, especially some of those tiger images you see coming out of places like Thailand with the tigers that are drugged and chained up. Can't promote pet trade. All right, so this is pretty good. Let's continue um, with uh, the, Matt says, the message that should be sent would depend on the audience and purpose though. Example, Snow Leopard Trust used to have only zoo images and calendars. And I personally prefer wild ones. But don't find the use of zoo images in this context to be necessarily wrong. No, and uh, the thing is, it also is about communication, right? So if you're saying they're zoo animals, that's totally fine. If you're saying they are wild animals, which are actually just captive game farm animals, that's where an ethical issue comes in. Because snow leopards exist in zoos. And, you know, if, if they're confined to a zoo in any case, um, you know, there's no harm in producing images of them. But what it crosses the ethical boundary then is of um, pretending that maybe that is um, a wild snow leopard or pretending that um, all the images in a calendar are um, uh, more sort of work related to what the nonprofit is doing. It's one thing to have a pretty animal and it's one thing to have a pretty animal pretending to be wild when it's not. Yeah, true. Matt says people won't pretend they're wild, but won't necessarily highlight the fact that they're not either. And so I think that does come down to um, more communication and being more honest and being more upfront. And is just something that is also um, uh, maybe a goal that we can all set for ourselves within our institutions and our organizations of um, reflecting what actually happens and what goes on in the field and um, to worry less about the snow leopard image and also focus more on the other aspects of the story. Calendars are different and I think very, very focused on just having you know one image and um, they're, they're a different beast. But just in general, I think this latter theory works effectively. All right, guys, let's move away from the whiteboard and I'll jump back into sharing my screen, cost up whenever you're done. All right, perfect. Go back here. So I kind of went through this in between, but we will return to it in the next whiteboard, which will combine with another question. So, um, a lot of you guys did talk about um, some of the pitfalls uh, and the negatives. And one of the, two of those things were baiting and the other thing was the wrong expectations. So if you do a search for snow leopard kills, um, you get a lot of images of snow leopards on kills, some of them on you know Ibex and other stuff, but um, a lot of them are on yaks or in zoos or on other domestic wildlife. And so what it can indicate is um, that domestic livestock are being killed and that people are hanging out there photographing it. And whether or not baiting is involved, it does um, give a pretty um, negative and uh, detrimental look to this stuff. Because, you know, the whole idea of, of um, snow leopard tourism for us is that domestic animals aren't killed, that we are actually um, able to either reduce dependence on livestock or um, able to both reduce dependence on livestock and create the proper infrastructure for securing livestock from getting eaten by wolves or bears or snow leopards. So, you know, better to prove corrals or um, just better ways to uh, keep the herds and flocks secure. So if, if you start Googling just general Google searches and you start getting, um, these sort of images, then it also creates this expectation in someone's mind that it is in fact easy to see a snow leopard on a kill. In, you know, I would say in over 150 snow leopard sightings, I have seen a snow leopard hunt six times and I've never seen it be successful. And I have shown up on kills in Ladakh and because they've been called in and we've been informed that there's a kill, and so we go to check it out. And every single time it's been a kill, it has been a domestic animal. And so, uh, and I don't even take pictures. If, if the snow leopard's sort of just hanging out by itself um, on a rock above the kill, I'll take pictures. But if it starts approaching the kill, I don't want pictures of a snow leopard eating a domestic animal because that is literally what we're trying to prevent. 
So it can be super detrimental to do a Google search and come up with these and then think, okay, so this is what I should expect because that will just basically promote that problem. The other thing then is if the demand keeps growing without the ethical boundaries um, that we're discussing, it can create um, a negative impact um, because of over tourism, because of damage to sensitive ecosystems, because of rising pressures of um, tour operators needing to perform for tourists. And so, you know, the majority of tour operators operating in tour in, in snow leopard landscapes are just commercial entities. There's no conservation element. There's no um, f uh, other motive than simply uh, to be a travel company. And so that can be problematic. And so it all comes back down to the images you use to communicate. Because if you're using the right images, if you're setting the right expectations, you will have the results that you need. And if you put everything out there, you might start getting results that you did not envision. And I, I realize that this might not translate um, entirely to simply engaging with fundraisers or donors or using photography and that kind of communication, but um, tourism will um, increase uh, gradually across snow leopard landscapes. And so I think it's very important for um, nonprofits to um, be, uh, keep this in mind and to uh, sort of keep an eye out for preventing this. Uh, um, you know, I threw in this little picture of a tiger um, because um, this is not what people should expect. This is, you know, a sort of classic safari image of a wild animal that a lot of photographers spend a lot of time and money trying to get. And if this is what they are um, expecting with um, snow leopard tours or tours to really wild remote habitats, even Siberian tigers, it can be problematic. And so as storytellers, it's our job to control imagery. And if we are using imagery, like we use, you know, many of my close up snow leopard shots, but I always talk about um, uh, the special circumstances for the shots or how rare it is to see that. And we use all, all of my really far away and distant shots as well to set this balance.